Oh, Yahuwah, we praise you and we thank you for this time together. We praise you and we thank you for taking your chosen people out of Israel and Sukkoting within there in the wilderness. We thank you for your promises to come, Father, of a millennial kingdom where you will come back down and you will Sukkot with us there. And we, we thank you now for what is the rehearsals of your fall feasts and the time that we have to share with each other before you to get closer in your word, Father. And we thank you for what is also. And what is is what I've been thinking about a lot. So my dog get in. Hallelujah. It's kind of the Sukkot setup that we have here that I wanted to share with you guys. There's a lot of people here. It's been a great event. But um, what I was thinking about what is, uh, is that our bodies are the temple of the Most High, okay? And that He and His Spirit is inside of us. Hallelujah. I have been Sukkoting the last seven days. Tomorrow um, is going to be the uh, Solemn Assembly, the eighth day. And I have had it on my heart to make a video concerning Sukkot. And I've just been prayerfully gathering information and notes, trying to figure out what the Father wanted me to do with it. And so uh, let's go ahead and open a prayer. And uh, then I'll kind of go over my notes because you know how we do here. We don't have any fancy PowerPoints. So grab your Bibles and uh, we're going to dig in them here shortly. <clears throat> Yahuwah, we praise you and we thank you. We praise you and we thank you for this Sukkot 2022 for looking back, Father, and realizing that you dwelt with the uh, children of Israel in the uh, desert, in the wilderness. And um, looking back to the first ever Sukkot on earth, Father, and how you uh, blessed Abraham through that. And looking to when Yahusha was here and, and walked the earth and Sukkoted with us. And looking ahead to the Millennium Kingdom, when you will rule and reign and Sukkot here once again with us. And we praise you and we thank you, Father. I pray that you open everyone's eyes to your truth, uh, ears, Father, to your word, and hearts to receive the message here today. And help us find Yahusha in the Sukkot, the now Sukkot word, Father, the right now. What does it mean for us today? Let's look into your word. In the name of Yahshua HaMashiach, we pray, and in his faith, and say amen and amen. Uh, so, I kind of briefly covered a little bit of it in prayer there, but I had um, looking forward, looking back, and what about now? Question mark. So, when we're, when we're looking back, I want to think of, um, and, and I, just, I guess I want to share this, um, this is going to be a longer, um, I don't know, study, if you will, than what I would normally do. Um, I'm going to share a little bit of history, and um, there's different themes um, that, that Scripture has for Sukkot, and that's why there's so many different uh, teachings on it, and some people just focus on the foreshadowing of the Millennium Kingdom. So just briefly i'm going to give what's available and then i'm going to give what the father gave to me because when i was thinking of what was what will be i was thinking what is like what is now what is, what is this and in the most awesomest of ways um he showed me and i think he showed me because he wanted yahusha wants to be glorified okay He's the way, the truth, and he's the only way to the Father, okay, and the life. 
So uh, we're going to find him today, um, and we're going to start out in Jubilees uh, chapter 16, 16 through 31. We will be reading some scripture today, okay? Um, so bear with me, should I mispronounce some words, okay? Um, I'm giving you the references, so you can go there as well in your Bibles, and you're like, well, well, uh, Brother Rich, I don't, I don't have jubilees in my Bible. Okay, um, I understand that there are there are apocryphas out there that you can get it, or you can get like I've got here. Um, I've got the uh, Millennium Sefer edition. Uh, it came in uh, under a hundred bucks, and I've got all the tabs here. That's not. Um, I don't get any money or anything from Sefer Publishing Group other than being blessed uh, to use their book. Um, so I'm just throwing that out there. It, it is, uh, it's got a world of stuff. I know uh, people are out there using the Hallelujah Scriptures. I have one of those as well. But if you want the Apocrypha, uh, you're gonna have to order it in addition to um, the Hallelujah Scriptures. So um, the cost doesn't quite equal out um, in the end. Um, and I happen to like, I mean, I like the way this is set up. Um, so <clears throat> I'm just sharing that. And we're going to start out, like I said, Jubilees, uh, chapter 16, 16 through 31. Okay, so let's go. <clears throat> it says, And we returned in the seventh month and found Sarah with child before us, and we blessed him. And we announced to him all the things which had been decreed concerning him, that he should not die till he should beget six sons more and should see them before he died, but that in Yitzhak should his name and oh, there we go, seed be called and that all the seed of his sons should be the other nations and be reckoned with the other nations. But from the sons of Yitzhak, one should become a holy seed and should not be reckoned among the other nations. For he should become a portion of El Elyon and all his seed had fallen into the possession of Elohim and it should be unto Yahuwah a people for his possession above all nations and that it should become a kingdom and priests and a holy nation. Okay, so you get some prophecy right here, and it's beautiful. <clears throat> and we went our way, and we announced to Sarah all that we had told him, and they both rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And he built there an altar to Yahuwah, and had delivered him, and who was making him rejoice in the land of his sojourning, and he celebrated a feast of joy in this month, seven days, near the altar which he had built, at the well of the oath. And he built Sukkoth for himself and for his servants on this feast. It, comma. Here it goes. This is so cool. And he was the first person. Okay. And he was the first to celebrate the feast of Sukkoth. And then there's like a brief little pause there and it says on the earth. And that was pretty sweet. I thought that was sweet. <clears throat> and then it says 22. And during these seven days, he brought each day to the altar an ascending smoke offering to Yahuwah, two oxen, two rams, seven sheep, one he goat for a sin offering that he might atone thereby for himself and for his seed and as a thank offering, seven rams, seven kids, seven sheep, and seven he goats, and their fruit offerings, and their drink offerings, and he burnt all the fat thereof on the altar, a chosen offering unto Yahuwah, for a sweet smelling savor, and morning and evening he burnt fragrant substances, frankincense, and galbanum, and stacked, and nard, and myrrh, and spice, and custom. All these seven he offered, crushed, mixed together in equal parts, and pure. And he celebrated this feast during the seven days, rejoicing with all his heart, 
and with all his soul, he and all those who were in his house, and there was no stranger with him, nor any that was uncircumcised. And he blessed his creator who had created him in this generation, for he had created him according to his good pleasure, for he knew and perceived that from him would arise the plant of righteousness for the eternal generations, and from him a holy seed, so that it should become like him who had made all things. And he blessed and rejoiced, and he called the name of this feast, the Feast of Yahuwah, a joy acceptable to El Elyon. And we blessed him forever and all his seed after him throughout all the generations of the earth, because he celebrated this feast in its season according to the testimony of the heavenly tablets. So, you know, back there in verse 21, it, it said uh, he was the first to celebrate the feast of Sukkoth on the earth. Thought this was extremely interesting. They bring out in verse 28, towards the end, the testimony. He celebrated this feast in its season according to the testimony of the heavenly tablets, which makes me wonder if there were heavenly tablets that was, you know, given a testimony of it, maybe, I think most likely, um, it had been happening in, in heaven. So that's kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> for this reason, in verse 29, for this reason, it is ordained on the heavenly tablets concerning Yashiro that they shall celebrate the Feast of Sukkoth seven days with joy in the month acceptable before Yahuwah, a statute forever throughout their generations, every year. And to this there is no limit of days, for it is ordained forever regarding Yasharel that they should celebrate it and dwell in Sukkoth and set wreaths upon their heads and take leafy boughs and willows from the brook and Avra Abraham took branches of palm trees and the fruit of goodly trees and every day going around the altar with the branches seven times a day in the morning, he praised and gave thanks to his Elohim for all things in joy. Wow. You know, we're <clears throat> burning the midnight oil. I got some tea here. I really wanted to go ahead and do this tonight because um, I didn't want to do this tomorrow night. And I really felt like the Father wanted me to get this out there during Sukkot. So um, here we are uh, together burning the midnight oil. Okay. Um, points I wanted to make. Okay. Abraham was the first person here on earth to celebrate Sukkot. Um, on earth and heavenly tablets. I, I, I like those things. Okay. Um, remember. Okay. So in in. Abraham is celebrating this, and I think he's looking forward, right? He's received all this information, these, these blessings, and he's looking forward. And so that's kind of cool. And it goes with um, the theme I'm looking, looking forward, you know, kind of maybe looking back, and then what is present now. So, um, we are going to go to Leviticus 23, looks like 34 and 36. Leviticus 23, I know you guys are going to beat me there. Okay. And in my notes here, I've got, let's highlight this, that we did that. Okay. 23, 34 through 36. You guys want to see my paper, don't you? Oh. <laughs> That's where all the magic happened. Okay. Um, so we'll go 34 and 36. 23. Yeah, okay. And... Okay. Uh, okay. It says in 34... It says, speak unto the children of Yasharel, saying, the 15th day of this seventh month shall be the feast of Sukkot. For seven days unto Yahuwah, on the first day shall be a holy assembly. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. On the eighth day shall be a holy assembly unto 
you and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. It is a solemn assembly and you shall do no servile work therein. So there's two Shabbats, okay? Um, and there's usually a weekly Shabbat in there too. So um, there are some things to think about as far as preparation and all that kind of stuff when you're going through this. And then I had 39 and 34, okay? And um, it says in 39, Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, Ye shall keep a feast unto Yahuwah seven days. On the first day shall be a Shabbat, and on the eighth day shall be a Shabbat. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branch of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before Yahuwah Elohikam seven days. 41. And ye shall keep it a feast unto Yahuwah, Seven days in the year, it shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in a Sukkot seven days. All that are Yasharel born shall dwell in Sukkot. That your generations may know that I made the children of Yasharel to dwell in Sukkot when I brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim. I am Yahuwah Elohikam. So, and I had down here, um, it shall be a statute forever in your generations, which once again, okay, um, that's another witness to Jubilees and what they had told Avraham, okay? And so we'll go back um, to Exodus, um, 13, it looks like 13, it looks like two different places we're going there. So we'll go to Exodus 13 first. Perfect. How about 13, and we're going to 20, it looks like through 22. <clears throat> check that real quick perfect so it was 1320 uh, Exodus 1320 says and they took their journey from Sukkoth and encamped in Etham on the edge of the wilderness and Yahuwah went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night and I put that in there um, because that's essentially what happened, right? When they went to the wilderness, they were all in tents, um, in Sukkot, um, and the Father dwelt with them. So that's kind of like looking back on that. That's what a lot of people do during this time. Uh, we're also going to see how um, Yahusha, or Messiah, uh, came and dwelt with us too. And then we'll talk about what is now. It's really, really cool where we're going with that, okay? So then over here... That one, okay. Yep, we were uh, Exodus 23, um, 16. <clears throat> and that reads, And the feast of first fruits and the first fruits of your labors, which you have sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering. And I threw that in there because uh, it, that's, it's Sukkot, ingathering. They just called it ingathering because it was one of the three feasts of harvesting where the men actually had to come before um, they had to travel, you know, uh, back and show themselves uh, to the assembly, to Yahuwah. And so this was one of them, as in, in gatherings, harvest time. Um, remember, they had an agricultural society, so it's a little bit different for us today. Um, but it doesn't change how we can, in obedience, uh, rehearse this event uh, for what's coming. Okay, uh, and the feast of end gathering, which is in the end of the year, when you have gathered in your labors out of the field. Yeah, 17, three times 
in the year, all your males shall appear before Adonai Yahuwah. No chamet shall be upon my offering of blood, and no fat of my feast shall remain until morning. Uh, okay. Good to go. All right. So, and so I wanted to I wanted to go there to show, um, and and really that's kind of where, where we're going with all of this is that um, Sukkot okay is really about um, the Father dwelling with us. Um, and we look back on that, his physical, or, or rather, um, the, that he dwelt with them in uh, the pillar of fire and the cloud of smoke, okay? And then we'll see that M Mashiach, right, uh, he came and he was in the flesh and, and dwelt with us. And then we'll talk more on that, okay? So um, we're covering some ground here. We're going over to um, uh, Devarim or uh, Deuteronomy, okay? It looks like we're in 16. <clears throat> yep, 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 perfect. Uh, 13 through 17. And that reads, You shall keep the feast of Sukkot seven days. After that, you have gathered in your threshing floor and your wine. So, I mean, come on. There you go, and gathering. Yep. Um, 14, and you shall rejoice in your feast, you and your son and your daughter and your manservant and your maidservant and the Levite, the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are within your gates. Seven days shall you keep a solemn feast unto Yahuwah, Elohaika, in the place which Yahuwah shall choose because Yahuwah Elohaika shall bless you in all your increase. And in all the works of your hands, therefore, you shall surely rejoice. So, and this was unique with that, um, with that promise, okay? Um, even today, okay? I mean, you work 40 hours a week, you're trying to pay your bills, you know, you're stretched out. Um, honor, honor Yahuwah, okay? Because he wants to bless you. He says it right here. He says it right here. Shall bless you in all your increase and in all your works of your hands. Therefore, you shall surely rejoice. Hallelujah. Uh, three times a year shall all your males appear before Yahuwah Elohaika in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of Matzah, and in the feasts of Shavuot, and in the feasts, feast, in the feasts. No, that's not, who, um, I need to caffeinate this tea. Um, in the feast of Sukkoth. And they shall not appear, and this is huge, okay? They shall not appear before Yahuwah empty. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of Yahuwah Aleheka, which he has given you. Now, we're, I've covered this in some of my other videos, but we're going to cover this today, too. We're going to talk about sacrifices uh, today we're gonna get into that. It's gonna get good. So we're gonna bring it from where they were at, and we're gonna bring that right over into where we're at today. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. No empty hands was the note that I had there. And okay. Perfect. There's numbers. Okay. Numbers uh, twenty nine. Okay, chapter 29, uh, verses 12 through 38, okay, um, is going to go over, okay, um, it goes over the sacrifices. There's not a ton of other information in there. It's really about the different types of sacrifices that they were making, Um and since we're not on the animal sacrifice anymore that way, um, we're not going to go there and read it together. Okay. But I, I want you to know it's Numbers chapter 29, 12 through 38. And it is a good idea for you to go check it out. Okay. Um, but this video is already going to be a little longer um, than what they normally are. So we're not just going to read about every single um, 
sacrifice, animal sacrifice that they had. Although we, we will get into some of that uh, when we get to Chronicles. Um, so now let's head over to, it looks like we're going to Nehemiah next. And that is going to be one of the ones I think I'll be right back with you. Looks like we're rolling again, yeah. So it was Nehemiah chapter 8, and we were looking at uh, verses 14 to 18. But then I wanted to also briefly hit on chapter 9, 1 through 3. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to read those together right now. And in verse 14 it says, And they had found written in the Torah, which Yahuwah had commanded by Moshe, that the children of Yasharal should dwell in Sukkot, in the feast of the seventh month, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Yerushalayim, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make Sukkot, as it is written. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves Sukkot. Everyone upon the roof of his house and in their courts and in the courts of the house of Elohim and in the street of the water gate and in the street of the gate of Ephraim and all the assembly of them that were come again out of captivity made a Sukkot and sat under the Sukkot. For since the days of Yahusha, the son of Nun, unto that day had not the children of Yasharal done so. And there was very great gladness. Also day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read in the Sefer of the Torah of Elohim, and they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly according unto the manner. We read there that they were coming out of captivity, okay? Where had they been? You know, Babylonian captivity. Um, many of you that are watching this right now um, are still in um, spiritual Babylonian captivity. Um, and we need to come out, okay? We're in spiritual Egypt, okay? Okay. Um, Maybe you haven't come into the faith yet, or maybe maybe you're out of captivity, so you left Egypt, you've left Babylon, and now you're looking for some guidance, like, what do I do? Um, maybe you came out of the Sunday church in the pagan holy days, like your eyes were open to the fact that, that you shouldn't celebrate evil on Halloween or Temus's birthday on the 25th, and you're like, okay, all right, something is really wrong um, with the holidays that um, mainstream Christianity um, celebrates. Okay, maybe your eyes have been open to that. Okay, and now you're like, well, what do we do? You return to the Torah. Okay, you return to the Word. All right, the, the Word. And the Word's going to guide you. And that's what they did. They come out of captivity. And in, in verse 9, we're going to read something else that's really important. Okay, it says, Now in the 20 and 4th day of this month, the children of Yashrael were assembled with fasting and with sackcloths, and earth upon them, and the seed of Yasharel separated themselves from all the strangers and stood and confess, confessed their sins and the iniquities of their fathers. And they stood up in their place and read the sephir of the Torah of Yahuwah Elohim, one fourth part of the day, and another fourth part they confessed and worshiped Yahuwah Elohim. Listen, I don't care what you're coming out of, all right? That's some solid advice right there, okay? All right, that's some teshuvah for you, all right? That's some repentance, okay? Come back, come back to doing biblical things, biblical ways, and repent before the Father, all right? And let's find where we're moving on to next, okay? And, and I did, I, I put that in there because that spoke out to me. That's like, okay, that is where we've been okay that's where some of you still are and you're coming out come out of her uh, come out of Babylon come out of Egypt okay but some of us too 
um, have already left, and now we find ourselves here. And some of us are even further along. They're like, brother, man, we've been in Sukkot a long time. And hallelujah, right? Hallelujah. Okay, so let's find... Um, so a lot of that, I think, today, um, a lot of the stuff that we've gone over, other than in Jubilees, because a lot of people don't include that. So Ju Jubilees was kind of looking ahead. I think this right here is where a lot of assemblies today are kind of looking back and remembering this stuff, okay? And then I, I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, you know, um, I feel like Sukkot has already happened, you know, like like it's a fulfilled... Um, That's good. That's green tea. It's got some spearmint in it. it tastes really good. Um, but I was thinking, I was praying about it. You know, I was trying to, to, to figure this out. You know, and I'm praying. I was like, um, yeah, yeah, I feel like um, that you coated with man once, right, um, in the wilderness. But then I feel like it happened again, like um, when Yahusha was here, right? So let's turn there. Uh, John chapter... 1, verse 14, it looks like is where we're going. This is Yehokanon, 114. It says, And the Word was made flesh and tabernacled among us. It says, And the Word was made flesh and tabernacled among us. Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Sukkot, Feast of Ingathering. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the Yakid, of the Father, full of grace and truth. And I was thinking about it, I was like, wow, man, that's amazing. Um, and then I was like, wait now, not only was he here, but he actually went to a Sukkot, okay? So, Let's go there, and, and we'll read that together, just because I love following Yahusha around, and you know everything that we're going to study is going to come back to him anyway. So let's, let's go there right now. Looks like it's John 7. It's over a couple chapters here. All right, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> let's dig in, guys. Here we go, okay? So we're reading. We're in John chapter 7. All right, we're going to read about the Sukkot, that Yahusha visited as recorded in John chapter 7. After these things, Yahusha walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in the land of Yehud, because the Yahudim sought to kill him. Now, Yahuwah's feast of Sukkot, which the Yahudim observed, was at hand. And his brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into the land of Yahud, that your Taladim, your disciples, also may see the works that you do. For there is no man that does anything in secret, and he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world, for neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Yahusha said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hates, because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Yahudim sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, He is a good man. And others said, Nay, but he deceives the people. Howbeit no man spoke openly of him for fear of the Yahudim. Now about the midst of the feast, Yahusha went up into the temple and taught. And the Yahudim marveled, saying, How knows this man the scriptures, having never learned? 
Yahusha answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of Elohim or whether I speak of myself. He that speaks of himself seeks his own glory, but he that seeks his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moshe give you the law, and yet none of you keeps the law? Why go ye about to kill me? The people answered and said, You have a devil. Who goes about to kill you? Yahusha answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moshe therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moshe, but of your fathers, and ye on the Shabbat. Circumcise a man. If a man on the Shabbat receives circumcision, that the law of Moshe should not be broken, are ye angry at me, because I have made a man every will whole on the Shabbat? Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is this not he whom they seek to kill? Below he speaks boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Mashiach? How bite we know this man whence he is. But when Mashiach comes, no man knows whence he is. Then cried Yahusha in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am, and I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he has sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Mashiach comes, will he do more miracles than these which this man has done? The Pharisee heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisee and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Yahusha unto them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. Then said the Yahudim among themselves, Whither will he go, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the nations, and teach the other nations? What manner of saying is this that he said, Ye shall seek me, and shall not find me? And where I am, thither ye cannot come. In this last day, that great day of the feast, Yahusha stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spoke he of the Ruach. That's important because we're going to get there today. Which they that believe on him should receive. For the Ruach HaKodesh was not yet given because that Yahusha was not yet glorified. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, of a truth, this man is the prophet. Others said, this is HaMashiach. But some said, shall Mashiach come out of Galilee? Has not the scripture said, the Mashiach comes from the seed of David and out of the town of Bit Lechem, Bethlehem, where David was. So there was a division among the people because of him. <laughs> Imagine that, huh? <laughs> oh, Yahusha, the great divider. It'll happen. You follow him, okay? Uh, people will divide from you. I guarantee it, okay? All right, no chasing rabbits tonight. Um, and some of them would have taken him, but no man laid hands on him. Then came the officers to the chief priests and the Pharisee, and they said unto them, Why have we not brought him? The officers answered, 
Never man spoke like this man. Then answered them the Pharisee, Are ye also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisee believed on him? But this people who knows not the law are cursed. Nicodemus said unto them, He that came to Yahusha by night, being one of them, Does our law judge any man before it hears him? And know what he does? They answered and said unto him, Are you also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee arises no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. Hallelujah. A lot of people out there they want to follow Yahusha. Well, what's Yahusha doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? Okay, so I, w I was praying, you know, and I'm like, okay, all right, so we have um, these instances, okay, of looking forward and looking back to uh, Yahuwah dwelling with us, Yahusha dwelling with us, Sukkoting with us here uh, on earth, okay, in a, in a physical form and, and also in a the form of the fire and the cloud, okay? And then we have uh, looking ahead, okay? And I, I, like I said, I think we started out with looking ahead because in Jubilees, even though we're looking back at it now, he was looking ahead, okay? So now we're, we're looking ahead, okay? And, and we see the millennium kingdom coming down. I have Zechariah uh, chapter 14. It looks like we're heading to verses 8 through 19. And let's see if I need to pause to get there. Because earlier, I was having a little bit of a time trying to find... It's over here somewhere. I'll be right back with you. Maybe you'll beat me there. Perfect. Okay, so we're... At uh, Zechariah chapter 14, and I had 8 through 19 talking about the Millennium Kingdom. Let's see what it says. Um, and it shall be in that day that living waters. That's another thing I just wanted to point out because I think we've heard it. We just heard it in John, okay, when he talked about waters and living waters. And um, these understand what I'm saying now okay this is in my opinion and in, in my um, the revelation that I'm getting from the father these are uh, signals um, speaking about the Ruah okay the Ruah HaKodesh okay um, for me if you think that it's something else um, please leave that in the comments because I'd be interested to study it out. And like I'd say, you know, sometimes I say I think or I imagine or I believe and that's not in scripture. Okay, that's just something that I kind of feel like maybe I'm leaning towards and, and maybe that um, I feel like maybe the Father's put that on my heart to share. Okay, uh, but it says, and, there, and, and it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea in summer and in winter shall it be. And Yahuwah shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Yahuwah and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Jeva to Ramon south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Shanael unto the king's wine presses, and men shall dwell in it. And there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. And this shall be the plague wherewith Yahuwah will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth and it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from Yahuwah shall be among them and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor 
and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor, and Yehuda also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be ga gathered together, gold and silver, apparel in a great abundance. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents as this plague. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahuwah Sevoth, and to keep the feast of Sukkot. So it sounds like everybody, okay, <laughs> everybody who's alive at that time, all right, is going to be um, celebrating uh, Sukkot. So uh, maybe you should learn something about it now, <laughs> just in case you make it. Um, and it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth under Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahuwah Sevoth, even upon them shall be no rain. And if a family of Mitzrayim go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith Yahuwah will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of Sukkot. This shall be the punishment of Mitzrayim and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of Sukkot. There you go. So what's happening uh, in the Millennium Kingdom, which is, he, you know, you read it, he's, he's down here, uh, Sukkoting with us. We're still going to keep Sukkot. It is a time of great rejoicing. And it sounds like even the people that don't want to rejoice um, are going to have to, <laughs> they're going to have to go through the motions, man, um, at, at that point in time. It's where you're at, okay? Uh, makes much more sense, I think, to, I think we talked about a promise earlier of, in, uh, uh, I think that was back in uh, Deuteronomy. That sounds much better, uh, coming with a good attitude. Good attitude means a lot, okay? All right, and then we were also looking ahead um, or to come, that Millennium Kingdom, uh, Revelation 21, 1 through 7. So that's, it's, it's going to be one I'm not going to have any problem finding, right? <laughs> that last book of the Bible. All right. Just to do Bible drills. Revelations was my favorite, you know, because you knew you just went to the back of the book. Okay, so uh, one through seven, yeah. And I saw a renewed heaven and a renewed earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, Yah, Yahukanan, or actually no, yeah, saw the holy city renewed Yerushalayim coming down from Elohim out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her man. Okay, so that's talking about the bride, but that's referring to it as new Yerushalayim. Now there are tidbits in here, okay? There are tidbits in here for people that want to figure out um, living stones, Yahusha being the cornerstone. Okay. Um, who we are, which we'll discuss today. Um, and being stones. Um, so there's some mysteries, right? Um, and they're kind of cool. Um, and I'm not going to lay them all out for you. You study them out. I'm studying them out too. Um, but there's just some cool information. Um, because there is, uh, you know, Everybody wanting to be the bride, okay? And then it dis this is described as a bride. So there's that to think about, okay? In regards to, in regards to that whole thought process, okay? <clears throat> and I, John, saw the holy city, renewed Jerusalem, coming down from Elohim out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her man. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Elohim is with men. And he will tabernacle with them, and they shall be his people, and Elohim himself shall be with them, and be their Elohim. And Elohim shall wipe 
away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Aleph and the Tav, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him, here we go again, right? I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcomes, this is in verse 7. I'm going to go ahead. I don't have a highlight on it. I'll throw that. He that overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his Elohim, and he shall be my son. Whew. He that overcomes. Okay. All right. Uh, finish strong is what we want to do, right, guys? Okay. All right, and it looks like I have a transition here. And in that transition, um, I want to go ahead and go to Hebrews 10, and we're going to go 1 through 25 um, because it's a beautiful place for us to be right this second. Evrim, right? Evrim. Uh, 10. Ba -ba. Almost there. I think this, uh, I think this tea is, I think the green tea is starting to get to me. So I've been sleeping in this tent <laughs> and I had gotten cots and they were rated for bigger guys. I'm a big guy. I'm six, five, every bit of 300. Even when I, um, when I diet down, <laughs> I'm still around 260, and I got these cots, man. And night one, it was okay. Night two, ooh, man, not much support because I'm down. So I'm like, all right, I'll just blow up. I had this little hiking air mattress I blew up, you know, I'm down on the floor. And man, it, I like to sleep on my side. I know some of you are side sleepers, so you know what I'm talking about, but Man, that weight, my weight, okay, on my side, just compacted my hips, man, all this time. I think I need to go to the chiropractor. <laughs> so I'm like, whew, Sukkot is great, but next year for Sukkot, um, I think I'm just going to end up getting like a queen size or double size uh, mattress, uh, one of those uh, memory foam ones, you know, that comes vacuum packed. Um, affordable. I think I'm just going to get that and I'll put that on the, the floor of the tent and just roll with that. I think that's going to be best instead of every time I've gotten it. And I had people go, why don't you do the air mattress? Every time I've had an air mattress, it works great until you fall asleep. <laughs> and then you wake up, man, and the air is like almost gone. And you're like, oh man, you got to wake up in the middle of the night and blow it back up, you know, to get that firm support back. Okay, we are definitely down a rabbit hole now. All right, but we did manage to make it over to Hebrews chapter 10. So let's start out. It says, For the Torah has a shadow of good things to come, not the image of things in the annual cycle of those sacrifices which they offered perpetually, which can never consecrate those who attend thereto. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he came into the world, he said in sacrifice and offering, you would have no delight. But a body have you prepared for me, and ascending smoke offerings and sacrifices for sin you have had no pleasure. As read through this, man. Um, then said I, Lo, I come, and the rolls of this effort is written of me to do your will, O Elohim. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and ascending smoke offerings and offering for sin you would have no delight, neither had pleasure therein which I offered by the priestly regime 
Then said he, Lo, I come to do your will, O Elohim. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahusha Hamashiach once for all. And every priest stands daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of Elohim from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he has perfected forever them who that are sanctified. Whereof the Ruach HaKodesh also is witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will cut with them. After those days, says Yahuwah, I will put my Torah in their hearts and in their minds will I write it in their sins and wicked deeds. I remember no more. Hallelujah. 18. Now where the remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Yahusha, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of Elohim, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more, as ye see the day approaching. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. So there's some tidbits in there, okay, um, about how uh, Yahushua is our high priest, okay? There are some tidbits in there about how he is not delighting in uh, sacrifices anymore, okay? Um, now, the point I'm going to make and, I, and where we're going to go with this, okay, is first we're going to, um, we're going to look at now the is, I call it the is, or the great now, or what now? What's the word for now, Father? So I'm, I'm praying about this, I'm looking this over, you know, I'm like, well, what is the word for now? And let me see. Okay, yep. Let's pause it real quick and find all right, perfect. So I was looking for um, this sheet right here. <laughs> um, and now I'm going to make the connection for the now. Okay, the, the now. And I had kind of, I couldn't figure out what was going to tie this together. Okay. And then uh, the father brought to my attention uh, in Second Chronicles. It starts in chapter 5. And we're almost going to go all the way to 8. We might go all the way to 8. This is reading. Um, please grab your Bibles, pause the video. Uh, Second Chronicles, uh, chapter five, uh, chapter six, and um, chapter seven. Okay, so we're we're gonna get into this. Like I said, we're we're burning the midnight oil tonight, um, and there's some beauty in this celebration. Okay. Um, Prior to this, he's talking about all these beautiful, awesome things that he's going to put in the temple. Okay, he finally gets everything ready to put in the temple, and all this happens on Sukkot. So, if you're still with me, thank you. Stay with me. I promise this is going to get really cool because now I'm talking about now. I'm talking about the people listening right now. Okay, why is this so exciting? Why is Sukkot so exciting now, right this second? How is the Father, how, how is Yah actually dwelling in us um, and with us right now, okay? How does all this work? And so let's find out, let's dig in, okay? Um, Second Chronicles chapter five, verse one, thus all the work that 
Shalomah, which is Solomon, made for the house of Yahuwah was finished. And Shalomah brought in all the things that David, his father, had dedicated, and the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of Elohim. Then Shalomah assembled the elders of Yasharel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Yasharel, unto Yerushalayim to bring up the Ark of the Covenant out of the city of David, which is Zion. Wherefore all men of Yasharel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast, okay, in the feast, which was in the seventh month, the seventh month, okay. And all the elders of Yasharel came, and the Levites took up the ark, and they brought up the ark and the tabernacle of the assembly, and all the holy vessels that were in the tabernacle. These did the priests and the Levites bring up. Also King Shalamah and all the assembly of Yasharel that were assembled unto him before the ark sacrificed sheep and oxen, which could not be told or numbered for multitude. Okay, so when we are thinking about the animal sacrifices, um, Shalomah, okay, Salomon really did it up. I mean, it's telling you here that you couldn't even number them. Uh, verse 7, And the priests brought the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah unto his place, to the oracle of the house, into the most holy place, even under the wings of the cherubim, for the cherubim spread forth their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim covered the ark and the staves thereof above, and they drew out the staves of the ark, that the ends of the staves were seen from the ark before the oracle, but that they were not seen without. And there it is unto this day. There was nothing in the ark save the two calfires which Moshe put therein, at Chorev, when Yahuwah cut a covenant with the children of Yashrael when they came out of Mitzrayim. So I just wanted to clear that up, okay? Inside the Ark of the Covenant, all right? And you know we're on a rabbit trail right this second, okay? Here is giving witness that the two tablets, what was on them? What was on them? The Ten Devarim, right? The Ten Commandments, okay? That's what was inside the covenant, all right? And so that... I think that's important, okay? Um, so I'm just throwing that out there, okay? What was in there, okay? Uh, a lot of that other stuff was not inside the Ark of the Covenant, okay? So, and it's in, in, in Deuteronomy, he says that's what he wants to write on our hearts, okay? And, and we just read that in Hebrews, right? Yeah, okay. So that's kind of cool, right? So, you know, note that, note, note, double note, triple note, note, okay? All right, um, we were at 11. Okay. And it came to pass when the priests were come out of the holy place for all the priests that were present were sanctified and did not then wait by course. Also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Akath, of Haman, of Yeduthun, with their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar, and with them a hundred and twenty priests. I dropped my <clears throat> I dropped my fidget tool while I'm reading. Okay, um Oh yeah, where were we? And with them, 120 priests sounding with trumpets. That's, that's quite the band. That is awesome. It came even to pass as the trumpeters and singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking Yahuwah. And right away, that jumps out at me. Okay, these were skilled this was orchestrated. It was an orchestra. It was skilled. It was skilled, okay, because they were making a sound together in unison. And when they lifted up their voices with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised Yahuwah, saying, "For He is good, for His mercy endures forever." Hallelujah! I know I'm needing to know that. Uh, that then the house was filled with a cloud. Even the house of Yahuwah 
so that the priests could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of Yahuwah had filled the house of Elohim. Man, if only sanctuaries today were looking like that. Then said Shalomo, Yahuwah has said that he will dwell in the thick darkness, but I have built a house of habitation for you and a place for your dwelling forever. And the king turned his face and blessed the whole assembly of Yasharel, and all the assembly of Yasharel stood, and he said, Blessed be Yahuwah Elohai of Yasharel, who has with his hands fulfilled that which he spoke with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Mitzrayim, I chose no city among all the tribes of Yashorel to build a house in, that my name might be there. Neither chose I any man to be ruler over my people, Yashorel, but I have chosen Yerushalayim, that my name might be there. And I have chosen David to be over my people, Yasharel. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of Yahuwah, Elohai of Yasharel. But Yahuwah said to David, my father, for as much as it is, or as it was in your heart to build a house for my name, you did well in that it was in your heart, notwithstanding you shall not build the house, but your son, which shall come forth out of your loins, he shall build the house for my name. Yahuwah, therefore, has performed his word that he has spoken. For I am risen up in the room of David my father and am set on the throne of Yashorel as Yahuwah promised and have built the house for the name of Yahuwah Elohai of Yashorel. And in it have I put the ark wherein is the covenant of Yahuwah that he cut with the children of Yasharel. And he stood before the altar of Yahuwah in the presence of all the assembly of Yasharel and spread forth his hands. For Shalomah had made a brazen scaffold of five cubits long and five cubits broad and three cubits high and had set it in the midst of the court. And upon it he stood and kneeled down upon his knees before all the assembly of Yasharel and spread forth his hands toward heaven and said, O Yahuwah Elohai of Yasharel, there is no Elohim like you in the heavens, nor in the earth, which guards the covenant and shows mercy unto your servants that walk before you with all their hearts. You which have guarded with your servant David my father, that which you have promised him and spoke with your mouth and have fulfilled it with your hand as it is this day. Now, therefore, O Yahuwah Elohai of Yasharel, guard with your servant David, my father, that which you have promised him, saying, There shall not fail you a man in my sight to sit upon the throne of Yasharel, yet so that your children take heed to their way to walk in my Torah, as you have walked before me. Now then, O Yahuwah Elohai of Yasharel, let your word be verified, which you have spoken unto your servant David. But will Elohim in, in very deed dwell with men on earth? Behold, the heavens and, and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this house which I have built have respect therefore to the prayer of your servant and to his supplication, O Yahuwah Elohai, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which your servant prays before you, that your eyes may be open upon this house day and night upon the place whereof you have said that you would put your name there to hearken unto the prayer which your servant prays toward this place. Hearken therefore unto the supplications of your servant and of your people, Yasharel, which they shall make toward this place, hear from your dwelling place, even from heaven. And when you hear, forgive. If a man sin against his neighbor and an oath be laid upon him to make him swear and the oath come before your altar in his house, then hear from heaven and do and judge your servants by requiting the wicked 
by recompensing his way upon his own head and by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. And if your people, Yasharel, be put to the worst before the enemy because they have sinned against you and shall return and confess your name and pray and make supplication before you in this house, then hear from the heavens and forgive the sin of your people, Yasharel, and bring them again unto the land which you gave them and to their fathers. When the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against you, yet if they pray toward this place and confess your name and turn from their sin, when you do afflict them, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your servants and of your people, Yasharel, when you have taught them the good way wherein they should walk and send rain upon your land, which you have given unto your people for an inheritance. If there be famine in the land, and there be pestilence, if there be blasting, or mildew, or locusts, or caterpillars, if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land, whatsoever sore, whatsoever sickness there be, then what prayer, what supplication, soever shall be made of any man, or of all your people, Yasharel, when everyone shall know his own sore and his own grief and shall spread forth his hands in this house, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive and render unto every man according unto all his ways, whose heart you know, for you only know the hearts of the children of men, that they may fear you to walk in your way so long as they live in the land which you gave unto our fathers. Moreover, concerning the stranger, which is not of your people, Yasharel, but has come from a far country for your great name's sake and your mighty hand and your stretched out arm. If they come and pray in this house, then hear from the heavens, even from your dwelling place and do according to all that the stranger calls to you for that all people of the earth may know your name and fear you as do your people, Yasharel. And may know that this house which I have built is called by your name if your people go out to war against their enemies by the way that you shall send them. And they pray unto you toward this city which have chosen. And the house which I have built for your name, then hear from the heavens their prayer and their supplication and maintain their cause. If they sin against you, for there is no man which sins not, and you be angry with them and deliver them over before their enemies, and they carry them away captives unto the land far off or near. Yet if they bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captive and turn and pray unto you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done amiss, and have dealt wickedly. If they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, whither they have carried them captives, and pray toward their land, which you gave unto their fathers, and toward the city which you have chosen, and toward the house which I have built for your name, then hear from the heavens, even from your dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive your people which have sinned against you. Now, my Elohim, let I beseech you, your eyes be open, and let your ears be attent unto the prayer that is made in this place. Now therefore arise, O Yahuwah Elohim, into your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests, O Yahuwah Elohim, be clothed with salvation. And let your saints rejoice in goodness, O Yahuwah Elohim. Turn not away the face of your anointed. Remember the mercies of David, your servant. Now when Shalomah had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the ascending smoke offering and the sacrifices and the glory of Yahuwah filled the house. And the priests could not enter the house of Yahuwah because the glory of Yahuwah had filled Yahuwah's house. And when all the children of Yasharel saw how the fire came down and the glory of Yahuwah upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised Yahuwah, saying, For he is good, 
for his mercy endures forever. Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before Yahuwah. And King Shalomah offered a sacrifice. Are you ready for this? Because he, <laughs> he really offers some sacrifice here. Of 20 and 2,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of Elohim and the priests waited on their offices. The Levites also with instruments of music of Yahuwah and David the king had made to praise Yahuwah because his mercy endures forever. When David, when David praised by their ministry and the priests sounded trumpets before them and all Yasharel stood, moreover, Shalomah hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of Yahuwah, for there he offered ascending smoke offerings and the fat of the peace offerings because the brazen altar which Shalomah had made was not able to receive the ascending smoke offerings and the oblations and the fat. Also at the same time, Shalomah kept the feast seven days. Sound familiar? <clears throat> he kept the feast seven days and all Yasharel with him, a very great assembly from the entering in of Shamath under the river of Metzarim. And in the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly. Now that for, for me, that is tomorrow. Tomorrow's the eighth day tomorrow. Um, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days and the, the feast seven days. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry at heart for the goodness that Yahuwah had showed unto David, to Shalomah, and to Yashorel, his people. Thus Shalomah finished the house of Yahuwah and the king's house and all that came into Shalomah's heart to make in the house of Yahuwah. And in his own house, he prosperously affected. Okay, and then 12, verses 12 through 22. It looks like 12 through 22. You're going to read it. But this is basically Yahuwah comes to Solomon, right? And answers him back. So all that stuff that Solomon was asking, he says yes. But then if you go down to 22, um, where was that? And it shall be answered because they forsook you, Elohai, of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Mitzrayim and laid hold on to other Elohim and worshipped them and served them. Therefore, as he brought all this evil upon him. Right, so basically he, he, he finishes out with a warning. Yes, I agree to what, you, what you've said, what he asked, what his petition was, okay. Yes, but, okay, if you turn, you know, it's not going to end well for you. Um, and then he brings up what I just read in remembrance of that, okay. So, So excited. When I was looking for the now word, Sukkot 22, now, what's it mean for all of us, right? This jumped out at me, okay? This is during Sukkot, and here King Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived, is in there um, dedicating the temple. You know, that's, he's, he's in the temple worshiping, crying out to, praising Yahuwah, okay? And so that got me thinking, well, what's the temple now? Okay, that's where the tie-in comes, okay? So I want to go to Luke 17. And we're, we are getting there, I know. This is why didn't you just tell me this at the beginning? we got to read all this scripture. I read it for you. Hopefully you were reading along. Okay. Luke 17, 20 and 21. And this reads, And was he, he was demanded of the Pharisee when the kingdom of Elohim should come. He answered them and said, The kingdom of Elohim comes not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of Elohim is within you. The kingdom of Elohim is within you. The kingdom of Elohim is within you. All right, so I love that. Now let's head over to 1 Corinthians 16 through 20. And we're going to play, can we find 1 Corinthians? Definitely overshot there. It's got to be hidden in here. 
there we go. I said first, right? First, yeah. Perfect. Three. Uh, yeah, 16 through 20. Okay, so. <clears throat> Are you ready? Okay, so I'm so excited about this, okay? Remember, okay? Um, Sukkot, wisest man on earth, all right? He is consecrating Yahuwah's temple, okay? Now, what do we find out? All right, 1 Corinthians 3, 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of Elohim? <laughs> I love it. Okay, know ye not that you are the temple of Elohim and that the Ruach Elohim dwells in you? If any man defiles the temple of Elohim, him shall Elohim destroy, for the temple of Elohim is holy. Which temple ye are? You are. If you're his, right? Okay. <laughs> there is that. Okay, there is that. Um, you need to be his, okay? And we'll go there a little bit later too. But for right now, okay, I just want to make the point, okay, um, we're the temple. Okay, and this is so beautiful. So I, I was sitting here going through this outline this morning and I had a brother and I, I won't call him out by name, but um, he had kind of came by and uh, he was visiting with me at my Sukkot or my tent, okay, uh, at, at my fire. And uh, I think I was sipping on some warm coffee and I, I'm drinking tea now. I would like to be drinking coffee with you guys, but then I wouldn't be able to get to sleep here in a little bit. Um, so he comes by and I'm trying to make this correlation to him because I feel like this is the correlation that, um, that the father wants me to make. Okay. Um, looking ahead, looking back, but what about now? Okay. And so I kind of went through this stuff with him. Um, briefly though with some of the other things but we get here I read all that to him and then I was like I tell him I was like what are you what are you man um, and and finally we we came to it we came to some scriptures okay we we are the temple okay bam right there know you not that you are the temple of Elohim what did the wisest man on earth do during Sukkot there you go and then it says here what does it say it says the Ruach Elohim dwells in you. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's amazing. Okay? It's amazing. You need to believe this. This is within. This is within. Okay? All right. So, now we're heading over to... Perfect. Looks like we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And we're going to have a good time trying to figure out what I scribbled right next to it, which I think it says 16 through 18. So we'll try that and see if it makes sense. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body, for two, says he, shall be one flesh, but he that is joined unto Yahuwah is Yaquid? 18. Flee fornication, every sin a man does is without the body, but he that commits fornication sins against his own body. 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Ruach HaKodesh, which is in you, which ye have of Elohim, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify Elohim in your body and in your Ruach, which are Elohim's. So the brother, we get into this, and um, he's like, understands. He, it's like a light bulb went off. It's like, I am the temple, and I want to get baptized. As a matter of fact, he said it had been on his heart for like three weeks, okay? So he wanted to get baptized. And I, my heart just starts bubbling up, man, because I'm like, I already felt the Ruach in this. I already felt it, you know, and I'm like, um, what a better time. What a better time than right now during Sukkot, okay, to get your temple right before the Father. To get your temple right before the Father. Because 
it, we're not our own, okay? We are the temple of Elohim, and he abides in us. He is dwelling with us. He's, if you will, Sukkoting inside of us, okay? And it's up to us, okay, so that we, we don't defile ourselves and we keep ourselves clean. And, and that's why I read back there, where was, where were we? Yep. <laughs> uh, Zechariah 14, uh, 8 through 19, I threw in uh, that other tidbit about the Teshuvah. Or no, I didn't. Sorry. Sorry. It wasn't in Zechariah. It was in Nehemiah. In Nehemiah, we read chapter 8, 14 through 18, and then I went to chapter 9, verses 1 through 3. It was all about Teshuvah because they were coming out of Babylon. They were coming out of spiritual Egypt. They were coming back to the Torah and they were repenting and they were doing things, Bible things, Bible ways. All right, they figured out, oh man, we need to observe this. Maybe that's where you're at. You need to institute um, these feasts, these biblical feasts. You need to get rid of the pagan stuff. You need to get rid of the imposter and the lies. You need to come into, um, you need to come into Sukkot. You need to come camping. You need to come camping for eight days, all right? <laughs> That's what you need to do. All right, so we've established that. Okay, and then, oh, that's what I liked here, okay. So I got down here, Leviticus 26, 13, 1 through 3, and I, and I wrote Paul was quoting. So let's see if I figure out what I meant by that. So we'll come back over here real quick. Leviticus 26. I like finding, and I like doing this when I'm making my notes, and I see Paul quoting the OT. <laughs> I like to write both those things down. I make my own little footnotes. Um, I could be better about it, though. I could have included more in this note. Uh, but we're chasing down this rabbit tonight. If we do anything, we will find this. All right, um, 26. Lord. 13, it looks like. I'm going to pause it real quick and see what I think. All right, guys, I found what I was looking at. And it turns out that last reference that I gave you of 1 Corinthians 6, 16 through 18, um, that that was awesome that that worked out the way that it did uh, because I actually meant that we were to turn to 2 Corinthians and I didn't get that written down right. So I'm already there, okay? And 2 Corinthians 6, 16 through 18. So I'm going to go ahead and read that. And what agreement has the temple of Elohim with idols? For ye are the temple of the living Elohim, as Elohim has said. I love this. I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, says Yahuwah, and touch not unclean thing. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and daughters, says Yahuwah Sevaoth. Now, I had put underneath that, okay, uh, Leviticus chapter 26, okay. And I think I put 1 through 13, but I circled 12, okay, because Paul was quoting um, right here in verse... Maybe I can see that. Maybe I need glasses. Okay, right here in verse 16. And that is actually what I had. I should have circled it. Okay, there we go. All right, so Paul in verse 16 is quoting verse 12 of where we're going right now. Okay, and I keep dropping my highlighter. Okay, so um, real quick in 26, um, we're going we're gonna to go there. You shall make no... This is uh, uh, Leviticus 26, 1. You shall make no idols, nor grave an image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am Yahuwah Elohim. You shall guard my Shabbats and reverence my sanctuary. I am Yahuwah. If ye walk in my statutes and guard my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain. 
there's that one of those key words again, in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit, and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely, and I will give peace in the land, lying down with nothing to fear in the Shabbats of life, though evil be a part of the land there is no sword to bring in the land and ye shall chase your enemies and they shall fall before you by the sword and five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword for I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you and ye shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new and I will set I will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you verse 12 this is what Paul was quoting and I will walk among you and will be your Elohim and ye shall be my people I am Yahuwah Elohim which brought you forth out of the land of Mitzrayim Mitzrayim Egypt right uh, for, for people going, what's Mitzrayim? Why do you keep saying it? Now you know um, that ye should not be their bondmen. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. So, um, once again, promises of tabernacling with us. Um, and uh, back over there to uh, the six, uh, 16 there. Um, I will dwell in them and walk in them and will be their Elohim. Um, and it says here, um, for ye are the temple of the living Elohim as Elohim has said. Okay. So th that's fulfilled prophecy too. Okay. Uh, that's really cool. Um, so we are, uh, we are that, that temple. We are that, that tabernacle, that holy place inside of us. Okay. How awesome is that? Hallelujah. Okay. All right. Now let's, let's take a look, um, what have I done here? Ah, double notes. All right, love it. All right, so now we're going over to First um, Peter chapter two. Okay, um, we're gonna get some good stuff from this. Okay, and we're gonna learn a little bit more about this priesthood, um, which we learned from Hebrews chapter ten, right? That Yahusha is the high priest over that. Okay, um, but let's go to First Peter two, and it looks like we're starting out in verse four. Where am I? I'm in Second Peter. That's my problem right now. Going back. First Peter. First Peter. All right, that is an agreement. Now let's see if I can read. To whom coming as unto a living stone. Remember I was talking about the stones, how cool that study is? <clears throat> okay. Uh, maybe I'll do something on that sometime. Leave some comments if you want something on that. But, um, okay. Um, boop, 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 boop. To whom, coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of Elohim, and precious, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up. <clears throat> Remember how I said earlier we were going to get to the sacrifices and stuff? Okay, so this is it. Okay, all right. So now understand, okay. Solomon was a priest king, and he was consecrating uh, the, the temple of Yahuwah, okay, um, as the priest, okay. And now here we are, okay, we are the temple. We are individually temples, okay, um, of the Most High, right? We just read that, okay. Now we find out, okay, we're priests, okay. That's why we can use the name Yahuwah, okay. And that's why we can, in fact, uh, internally, okay, um, also, uh, repent and we can start thinking about those sacrifices, which I said, we we're going to get to, we're not on an ant animal sacrificial system anymore. So let's look a little bit into this. Let's see what we can find as to what we should be doing, because we did read, I think it was in Deuteronomy that we don't come to this feast empty handed. Okay. We don't do that. All right. That's not what we do. Uh, no one should. Okay, um, so we should be bringing the appropriate sacrifices, the appropriate ascending uh, smoke offerings. So let's take a look at that, see what it looks like. Okay. Um, 
Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Elohim by Yahusha HaMashiach. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Tyson, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believes on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation. Okay, here you, this, this is driving home that priesthood thing. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Which in time past, okay, okay, okay. Now this is hitting home, okay, and this is where we're kind of go with this, okay, because uh, some people would be like, well, I'm not Israel, I'm not Yasharel, I don't know, what is Yasharel? I'm not a Jew, okay? And, and they'll kind of go down this road with you, okay? Uh, just understand this, okay? You're grafted in, okay? So if you're a Christian, Christian, you're grafted in. You're grafted into what, okay? You aren't grafted into, um, you know, um, uh, you know um, denominations, okay? You're not, you know, grafted into the Catholic branch of uh, the body of Mashiach. <laughs> All right, it doesn't exist, okay? It's just not there. All right, uh, you're grafted into Yasharel. All right, that's hello. Um, so that's where we're at. Okay, which in time past were not a people. Okay, um, we weren't. Okay, um, at least a lot of us coming into this truth. Right? I mean, we, just, we weren't. Um, but are now the people of Elohim? How'd that happen? That's awesome. Um, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. And I, I want to, man, I want to, I'm going to, I'm going to underline that. Abstain from fleshly lusts, which war against the soul. A lot of times when you're reading in scriptures, many times, many places, okay, um, where it's talking about things that resemble or are uh, spiritual sacrifices, there's also a warning about things that war against them. It always seems to be this um, fleshly lusts, okay? And uh, that's, that's also been um, a topic throughout this coat. Uh, many people in Torah struggling with pornography, okay? Um, and an alarming rate, okay? This is not okay. All right, I just want you to know that it's not okay. It's not okay if you and your significant other, your husband or your wife are watching pornography together. It's not okay. That's not an undefiled relationship. That's two people committing adultery, okay? And it's the same as bringing a third person into that, okay? That's what it is. Sorry if that hurts your feelings. It's written clearly throughout scripture. And most of the people that are upset at me saying anything about that are people who are not ready to give up those demons, okay? Because that's what you're dealing with. I've been there personally. Go back, watch my testimony. Um, through the grace of Yahusha, he's giving me freedom for that. By his stripes, I was healed. You can be healed too. But you're not going to be healed, okay, while you're dancing with the demons, okay? They're trying to keep you in bondage, okay? All right, so uh, moving on. Having your conversation honest among the other nations, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall behold, and they're going to see the good works you're doing, right? Okay. Uh, glorify Elohim in the day of visitation. Hallelujah. Okay. So, uh, heading real quick over to uh, Romans. And it looks like we're in 12, 1 and 2. Yes. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Elohim, that ye present your bodies 
Oh my word. What I am, what I'm, what I'm talking about, guys. What am I talking about? What was just, what was just talking about? What am I talking about? Boom. Present your body as a living sacrifice. Okay. Holy. Acceptable unto Elohim. Now, check this out. There's a comma. There's a comma. Everything after the comma is cool. All right. Which is your reasonable service. It's just, it's reasonable. Okay. Don't you think it's reasonable? What did Solomon, and obviously I'm paraphrasing now, I'm adding live, whatever you want to say. I'm not adding the scriptures. I'm just, you know, come on. How many thousands of, of, of cattle did he sacrifice to the father? Okay. And here he is. He's just telling you, present your body. Why? Your body is the temple. Okay. Keep your body out of other people's bodies that you don't belong in. Okay. It's, come on, come on, come on now. <laughs> okay. Um, and here we go. And this is great because you'll have people and I have had people and I'm going to do a study on this. Okay. Um, but they'll be like, well, um, how do I get free? Okay, well, and be be not conformed to this world. Man, this is so good. I'm underlining this. This should this should have been underlined. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. Oh man, that's just beautiful. That's beautiful. Okay. Now, I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, okay? Uh, but I did share my testimony over Sukkot, and I had some individuals come up and ask me questions afterwards. And I'm glad that they did. Brothers and sisters, I'm praying for you, okay? I'm praying for your freedom. I went through what I went through so that I could share with you uh, how the Father was able to set me free, okay? But let's just get this straight. And this is not just directly to you, okay? Uh, but I feel I need to say this, okay? And be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, okay? That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Elohim. I'm telling you this, okay? Adult websites will never, ever be, all right, good acceptable or perfect or the will of Elohim. Give it up. Go find yourself some sackcloth and ashes. Repent fast and then find an accountability partner. Yahuwah wants to set you free. Yahusha wants to set you free today. But you gotta want to stop dancing with those demons. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, what about, so these are the, the, the spiritual sacrifices and, and you can go um, through a longer study on that, but I'm just here to show you, okay, that um, what, what Yahusha wants, okay, what, what Yahuwah wants now are you sacrificing your will, okay, and, and being obedient. Those are the things that he wants. And he's, he's told us before. He told us in Psalms and he tells us in Hebrews that he didn't really desire the animal sacrifices. Um, what he desires um, is us to have hearts of flesh and us to have uh, the Ruach HaKodesh and to have his word written on our hearts, okay? And we were there today. But let's head over to Psalms 141 and I guess we'll play... I think that's a 27, but it could be a 22. So let's just get to Psalms 141 first. <laughs> and, we'll, and then we'll play Decipher Rich's uh, Letters. Or, I'm sorry. We all know. Those are numbers. Those weren't letters. Okay, Obadiah. There we go. Psalms. Perfect. And it's going to be towards the rear. All right, and we made it, okay? Perfect. All right. And there we go. And it's two. It's first two. 
But oh, I think I, one and two is what I did. That, that's okay. That's way messed up how I wrote that. But all right, I figured it out. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalms 141. Yahuwah, I cry unto you. Make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto you. Let my prayer be set forth before you as incense. And the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. I know we've been together a long time today, guys, but I'm going to finish this psalm because it's absolutely awesome. And I can't think of anything better to do on the seventh day of Sukkot, you know, before the eighth day of the psalm assembly. So here we go. Verse three, set a watch, O Yahuwah, before my mouth, guard the door of my lips, incline not mine heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity, and let me not eat of their dainties. Let the righteous smite me, it shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me, it shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head, for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. When their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at Sheol's mouth. As when one cuts and cleaves wood upon the earth. But my eyes are unto you, O Yahuwah, Adonai. In you is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. Guard me from the snares which they have laid for me and the gens of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, while that I with all escape. Hallelujah. Uh, once again, verse two though. Um, sending up the prayers before him as incense and lifting up his hands as the evening sacrifice. Pray. Throughout this Sukkot, there has been one thing that has dawned on me, and I will be changing that next year. Um, there needs to be more prayer. We need to be calling out to the Father. I think it's great that we share things with each other, okay, but we need to be in our prayer closets. And when we're together corporately, we need to be praying corporately together, okay? Um, we are a body. We need to work as a body. We need to pray as a body, and we need to bring the Father into these things, okay? You got an issue? Pray about it. Okay, you got an issue with somebody else, pray about it. You got to pray, is thanking. Come on. It is a relationship with the Father. I've asked many people, and I'll ask you today, in your heart, what's Yahushua saying to you? What's he saying to you? What's your now word for today? What are you supposed to be focusing on? It's a still, calm voice you're listening for. If you haven't heard it, if you're not hearing it, if you're not sure, just you ask him. Just pause this. Close your eyes, bow your head, lift up your hands, repent, and then ask Yahusha, what's the now word for me today? What do I need to be focusing on before you? I send this prayer up to you as incense. I anticipate to hear your word. Would you give me a a word picture? Would you give me a verse? Would you give me a hymn? Would you give me a word, Father? I want to be obedient. I want to follow you in this temple, in this house. This priest wants to glorify you. Be glorified, Yahusha. Be glorified through me. And we're not closing yet, but uh, I figured that needed to be said. So let's head over here. It looks like I've got one other one here somewhere. Yep, Revelations 8, 3, 4. So let's head there really quick. Uh, once again, Bible drill book of the day. Always went in a Revelation. Chapter 8, verse 3 and 4. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of the Kodeshim, with the prayers of all saints, upon the golden altar which was before the throne, and the smoke of the incense 
which came with the prayers of the Kodeshim, ascended up before Elohim out of the angels' hands. How much incense have you sent up over Sukkot? We're supposed to send up incense. It's a sweet smelling f savor. <laughs> I wanted to say flavor, but it's a, it's a sweet smelling, I don't know, fill in the blank, okay? Uh, before Elohim, okay? Get on your knees, pray, call out to your father, all right? He's with you. He's dwelling with you, in you, if you are his. He's in your temple. You're the priest of that temple, and your job is to, to glorify him. It's to serve him. It's to wait on him, to hear him, to obey him. It should be written on your heart. And I think, yeah, there we go. I got on my second set of notes. Bring back to Yahusha. And hopefully we've been there this whole time. Okay. Sukkot. Then. Now. To be. All right. So we are going to. John. The beloved. Uh. The beloved apostle, right? Mm -hmm. And we're going to John 15, all right? And it looks like, um, and it's so hard. I really want to say coming in for a landing. Um, it looks like the boat is going to dock. No. <laughs> all right, we're almost finished, okay? We're almost finished. And as a matter of fact, I'm almost out of tea here. Yep, the tea is ice cold now, and it was really hot. Okay. Let's see if I can find this. All right. Trying to find John 15. It's kicking my butt. All right. Must mean it's good. So we'll start off in 14 because that's where we're heading. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Boom. And... Hold on one second. Perfect. Okay. I know we're in John. I know we're in John uh, chapter 15, verse 14. Okay. But I finally figured out my other notes here. So let's head back uh, to Second Chronicles. Let's go to 717. Okay. So in 717, it says, and as for you, if you will walk before me as David, your father walked and do according to all that I have commanded you and shall guard my statutes and my judgments, then will I establish the throne of your kingdom. And I have covenanted with David your father, saying, there shall not fail you a man to be ruler in Yashorel. Okay, so back at it, okay? So the whole thing is right here, right? It's um, do not fail, okay? to do all my commandments, okay? Uh, and do according to all that I have commanded you and shall guard my statutes and judgments, okay? And so that, that was where, I was having trouble reading my script scratch. Anyways, that was uh, Second Chronicles, okay? Bring it back to Yahushua, and what does he say? What does he say in 15, 14? You are my friends, okay? Um, and, but, but here's the key. If you do whatsoever, I command you. Okay, so that's how I was trying to tie in um, the uh, that portion in Second Chronicles and bring it back around. But because I need to work better on organization, but I wanted to bring it back to Yahusha, and we had talked about grafting in earlier. So let's go over this a little bit in John 15. Okay, let's understand this. Let us reason through one more chapter of Scripture together. All right. Um, I am the vine of truth, and my father is the husband. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. 
Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the netzerim. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. If a man abides in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered, and men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye guard my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have guarded my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there you go. Okay. So we have gone over um, the first Sukkot. All right. And then we've gone over what what, what I like to call the, uh, you know, the Exodus uh, children of Yasharel Sukkot's. Um, we brought it up to Solomon's Sukkot, which tied that into um, us being the temple. And so for Sukkot, uh, this is the time, okay, um, for us to uh, consecrate our temples before the Father in preparation for the Sukkot to come, which is the millennial kingdom, okay? Okay. So as we dig into this, if you felt like, man, I need to be baptized or I need to, uh, <laughs> I, need, I need to repent of this or that, do those things. And remember, it's a coat. Don't come empty handed. All right. Come with your incense, your prayers to, to raise up. Come with your, your spiritual sacrifices to give. And I will say this too. It does mean a lot. All right. If you're able to financially help out with the hosts uh, who are buying, you know, uh, plastic silverware, or if you're able to bring a dish to pass. Um, these things all count. A lot of those animal sacrifices were, in fact, being eaten um, by the assembly, okay, and, and by the priests. So um, things to keep in mind, okay. Um, if you made it this far, I just, I really want to thank you. Number one, I know this has been a really long kind of a study. We've covered a lot of scriptural ground. I pray that it's been a blessing to you. If you have anything to add about Sukkot, how you do Sukkot, or um, things you would like to do at Sukkot, uh, leave those in the comments, provided they are fruitful, to bless the others that are reading it. I know, uh, and if you were able to draw... Um, a word from the Father out of this teaching, uh, go ahead and share that in the comments. If you like this type of uh, content um, that is uh, uplifting and edifying and encouraging you on your walk, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe. And um, I think there's a bell icon or something that lets you know when I drop my latest videos. Um, I, I try to do that every three days. I've fallen behind uh, because of the, the Feast of Sukkot, and I just felt that the Father was telling me to wait. Um, they also, um, I was able to uh, speak, give a testimony at Sukkot, which had also taken um, me a little bit of a different way. But I really felt the Father saying, Son, I want this out here before the eighth day solemn assembly because I don't want you putting it up on that day. So tomorrow, I'm just going to spend that last eighth day of Sukkot with my brother and with the Father and... Um, really focusing on consecrating my temple. This is a great time for those of you out there who have been contemplating maybe getting baptized for the first time, maybe getting baptized again, okay? Um, 
maybe praying and calling out to the Father for a fresh infilling of his Ruach HaKodesh. Um, if this has been a blessing to you, go ahead and hit the like button. I'm not sure if I said that or not. As I said, we've, we've been burning the midnight oil. So um, let's go ahead and uh, let's close in a prayer and a, and a blessing for all of you. Yahusha, uh, Yahuwah, we come before you and we just praise you. We thank you for dwelling with us. We thank you for your Sukkot, this time of rehearsal for what's to come, this time of remembrance for what has been, in this time of realizing what is now and how you're in us how we're your temple, how your kingdom is here. It's within us. Father, I pray that you would, I, I pray that you would bless the people listening to this, the people that come to hear this, the people that come to listen to the whole thing, Father. I pray you give them a special blessing, Father. I pray that you would open their ears to your word, open their eyes to your truth, Father. I pray you open their mouths to speak your truth. Father, we praise you, we glorify you. We know that Sukkot is all about you, Yahusha. You are the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through you. We praise you and we thank you and we thank you for your Ruach HaKodesh, for, for being your temple. Help us to understand how to be better priests, how to offer up better spiritual sacrifices to you. I pray, Father, that you would convict all of us to hit our knees more and to send up sweeter savoring incense before your throne. Help us with our prayers. Father, teach us. Teach us through your Ruach HaKodesh to please you in all things for your glory. And I pray these things in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach and in his faith. Amen and amen. Listen, I want to I wanna bless you and bless your families. Yah bless you. Yah bless you and your families. Uh, I pray that this fall feast time has been a huge blessing for you. I want to thank you uh, for joining me in watching this video. And I just, uh, I pray blessing on all of you. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, oh wait, I was going to do this here. Um, and be of good cheer. <laughs>